today the topic is basic electric defrost and the methods that are used and kind of the interconnecting wiring that's associated that you would see in a refrigeration system. The reason for the electric defrost is, is if we have a box temperature typically below 33, 34 degrees, we do not have enough warm heat in the air to defrost that evaporator in an off cycle. So we have to have some type of positive defrost, like when we have a zero degree freezer or a minus 10, to get that frost off the coil, you know, from humidity and stuff like that building up while the air is going across. So the methods that we typically see is we have either this style here with the time clock and the, con the defrost heater contactor and the fans running off the, the uh, timer in the condensing unit. And then we have interconnecting wiring between the condensing unit and the evaporator. Basically point to point wiring from like 4 and X and those kind of associated terminals would be kind of like paralleled or we have the heater contactor which would directly go wiring to the heaters themselves. The, the other thing that you could see potentially is you might not have this set up in the, in the outdoor condensing unit, you might have this timer located remotely and then have like a remote wiring going feeding the evaporator. If you have multiple evaporators in this setup, typically what would need to be done is you do not wire each evaporator in parallel back to the time clock because what can happen is with what they call the X terminal which is the uh, defrost termination if those are wired in parallel and not in series between multiple evaporators you'll get that evaporator which comes out of defrost off its termination control in control of the whole defrost of all the evaps so the thought is if those are all daisy chained together, then as one defrost warms up, then that X would energize and go to the next one. And then after they're all complete, then it would come back and energize the X terminal, which then would energize the solenoid on this time clock, taking it out of defrost. To help assist you with the wiring between the evaporator and the condensing unit, potentially take a look and see if you can have the installation booklet with typical wiring diagrams, or there could be wiring diagrams on the condensing unit and the evaporator. And if you have multiple evaporators, there could be wiring diagrams to help you assist you on the wiring of the multiples in the installation booklets.